see a model in an airflow and measure the forces and the moments acting on it and increases the level of understanding and just grasp of the whole idea. Professional cycling teams, skydivers, I mean, anything that has wind flowing over it can be tested in the wind tunnel. This is the new Wright Brothers wind tunnel. It replaced the old Wright Brothers tunnel. Its construction started way back in 1938. It's been on the list of things to do since the 80s. There have been some real problems with the old tunnel and its ability to collect data. The old one was decaying. The foundations were cracking, it was settling. The flow quality was quite poor. Imagine driving a car 30 miles an hour in first gear. It just screams and it's loud and it's inefficient. That's what the old wind tunnel was like. I don't know if it's lore or not, but apparently the old tunnel was only run in its top speed once because it was so loud people in Boston complained. We looked at renovating it and decided it just doesn't make sense. At some point you, you have to just junk it and replace it. It was a once in a lifetime chance to do this, so we wanted to get it right. Building a new tunnel was a shoehorn operation from my viewpoint. We wanted a state-of-the-art facility, the largest test section we can fit into the site. Because there's surrounding buildings on all sides, we just couldn't make it bigger. So this is a completely new wind tunnel architecture. Aerodynamically, it's less than half of what it usually would be using a conventional wind tunnel architecture. It's so compact and it fits into the existing site. This is a prime example of building something in an urban environment where we didn't have the ability to really lay down any materials. So the coordination of the different parts of the tunnel that needed to come, it all needed to come at the right time so that we could get it lifted up and put into place. There's not a lot of wiggle room in any of this. The big pieces had to be brought in and installed and the building kind of went up around them. I just really like developing new era designs and hardware and just seeing it come to life. This is by far the, physically the biggest thing I've ever worked on and it happened amazingly fast. By modern aerospace standards, this was a very, very fast project. The test section itself is 12 feet wide, almost 8 feet high and it's 18 feet long, so it's a very large uh, wind tunnel test section. As we exit the test section, the flow needs to come around the circuit and go around again. So this is the main balance room. This whole device, the yellow and blue, is the main wind tunnel balance. And it's a fairly elaborate, fairly sophisticated mechanical device which resolves the three forces and the three moments on the model and sends them to six load cells that measure force applied to it and reports it to the computer. All right, so here we are in the main diffuser of the wind tunnel. This is fiberglass. This is simply an aerodynamic fairing. Uh, around the, the, the motor just so we get clean flow coming off the motor itself. And this is the main fan. I can, I can spin it by hand. The bearings are very good. <laughs> and in fact, we spin this around just to do a visual check that all the, the fan is okay, nothing's out of alignment, all the bolts are good. This fan has a very pronounced flare at the tip. The blade cords at the tip are almost twice as wide as they would be for what I would call a conventional fan. And that makes a big improvement in how the fan behaves. It saves about 10% drive power. It took a long time to get this off the ground, but we finally done it. <laughs> this is a pretty impressive piece of equipment. I think it's going to be a very nice facility for a very long time to come and you can use it to great effect for education research and just interactions with the industry and makes us proud, frankly. Mm -hmm.